Hey there, this is Math 2, Unit 4, beginning a new unit today. This is uh, Worksheet 1A, talking about the mid-segments of triangles. And so in class, you had a lesson about this today, and there's a few kind of formulas you probably talked about today to talk about how to find a midpoint between several different points. So this first question here, which I'm just going to skim through real quick, they do give you some certain things like the midpoint formula, which is an x value plus an x value divided by 2, and a y and a y divided by two, meaning that if I take a y, x, y coordinate pair here, and I take an x, y pair here, I can use those values to plug them into here in order to find out what the middle point of that line might be right about there. And that's what you would do for that point there. You do the same formula for the find, you wanna do what it's asking, sorry, for A is to find the midpoint of JL, and for B is to find the midpoint of JK, so use that same formula there. In terms of finding the slope of a line, okay, what you would do is you use this formula here, which is, you're again, looking at two points. Let's say, again, you have two, six, and four, two, and you take your y2 value minus your y1 value. So in this case here, you might do six minus two, right? Six minus two. And then x2, which would be the two minus four, two minus four. And when you get that solved, you have 4 over a negative 2, which reduces to a negative 2 over 1, or negative 2 as a slope. So, hey, I did that one there, okay? And by doing that, then you're going to look at one line. You'll also, because you'll have a mid-segment, you have another line about here, and you'll have points to compare. And if they are parallel, then they have the same slope, and that's how you prove that to be true. We also have a formula here for what's called the distance formula in order to find the length of different between two points. This is helpful when you're not working on a straight line. If I'm working on a straight line from here to here, I could say, oh, the length is one, two, three, no problem. But when I'm talking about a length from a diagonal point from here to here, I just can't count up the number of units it goes down because it's also going over to the right a little bit as well. So I have to use this formula there to determine the lengths of uh, lines that are at a diagonal angle there, okay? so. And then from that, we're going to look at what happens also between our lengths of our sides. Again, you're looking here at the length of M and M compared to LK. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the page and look at number two with you guys today. Because I'm going to guess that perhaps your teacher did number one with you um, in class, most likely. So I'll take a look at that one and then let's see what we have. Okay. So let's, first of all, we're going to take our point and we're going to draw it on our coordinates here, coordinate plane. So we're going to go negative, A is at negative 2, comma 3. So we're going to go 1, 2 over and 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put a point there for A. B is at 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1. So there's point B. And C is at 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's point C right there. So those are the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle. And so I can again take my straight edge here and play connect the dots with those just to make sure I have this in the right way. So I have a triangle there. I have a triangle coming out of here, my line to my line to my line and my line. Make sure I'm still in the camera angle. Camera frame. Okay, so I have that triangle there. So we plot them, label them, check. Got it. It says find the coordinates of the midpoint of AC. So the midpoint of AC, and we're going to label it with D. To find the midpoint again, I'm going to look at my, my values here. It could help if I just wrote down here just as a note, this is negative 2 comma 3 is where A is at, B is at 6 comma 1, and C is at 4 comma 5, okay? Again, this is my X value and my Y value, right? So to find the coordinates of midpoint of AC, I'll use the midpoint formula, which is again X1 plus X2 divided by 2, and that's for the X value. And the y value would be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So we're looking at a and c. Okay, so my x values, I have negative 2 here plus a 4 divided by 2. Okay, negative 2 plus a 4, and I have a positive 2 and a negative 
no, sorry, positive four, negative two gives me a positive two altogether. So that's two over two, which reduces to one. That's my x value. And my y value is gonna be the first one, which is three. Okay, three plus the second one, which is five. Divided by two gives you eight over two, which is four. So my midpoint for D is gonna be at one comma four. And so we can label that there. We go to one and we go up one, two, three, four. And it should be on that line if we did things properly. And we did here, so we're gonna call that D. And so D is at one comma four. If I wanna find the mid coordinate of the midpoint of CB and label it E, I'll do the same thing. So C and B, Again, we're looking here, we're gonna do x1, which is four, plus x2, which is six, divided by two, and four plus six is 10, over two is five, that's my x value. And to find the y value, I'll do five plus one, divided by two, which is six over two, which equals three, and that's my y value. So I'm gonna put a point at five comma three. Okay, so here is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and sure enough, it's on the line, and we'll call that point E, and that's where point E is gonna be at. So E is at five comma three. It says mathematically show that DE is parallel to AB. Well, I haven't finished this line here at DE, but let's go ahead and draw it in real quick. So if I take my line here, my ruler, and play connect the dots for DE, what it's asking me to do is to prove that DE, this guy, is parallel to this guy. So they're going the same direction. And the way we would prove that to be true is if they're parallel, they should have what? The same slope. And that's what we're looking for there. So to find out they have a slope, the same slope, we'd use the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, okay? So let's take a look first of all at DE, okay? If I put back my points here, D is at one comma four, so that's just what the D value is gonna be, and E is at five comma three. So I need to know those numbers there. So let's take a look then at our y2 and our y1. So our y2, we could say that we're looking at, going from here to here, we'll call this our one, and this our two, okay? So let's do it that way and see what happens here. So y2 is three minus four divided by x2, which is five, minus the first one, which is one. So three minus four is a negative one, and five minus one is a positive four. So my slope is negative one fourth for D E. Okay, that's my slope there. So if this is a parallel line, then what I find for AB should be the same slope. So AB, we take our Y2, which is again, uh, Y2 in this case is one, sorry. So Y2 is one minus our Y1, which is three divided by six minus a negative two. So one minus three is minus two, and six minus a minus two becomes a plus plus, and six plus two is eight. Two divided by eight can reduce to negative one fourth. And so do we have the same slope? Yes, we do. So because they have the same slope, we're proving that those are gonna be parallel lines. Now it says to mathematically show the length of DE is half the length of AB, okay? So to do that there, what we're gonna have to do is use the distance formula to find out the lengths of these things, okay? The distance formula again was the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we're gonna use that formula then to say Okay, is DE, this line, half of that line? Okay, let's find out. So let's find the length of DE. So DE, first of all, our lengths for DE, we have the square root of, and we do our X2, so we have five, 
minus our x1, which is 1. Okay, 5 minus 1, and that'll be squared. And we're going to add that to our y2 minus our y1 squared. Notice these values right here, x, x and y, match our x and y there, right? It's the same number combination. So just moving down this direction here, 5 minus 1, sorry, square root of 5 minus 1 is 4, and that's 4 squared, plus 3 minus 1 is negative 1 squared. So let's go ahead and square these things. So 4 squared is 16, so the square root of 16, the square root of negative 1 times negative 1 <laughs> is 1. So I end up with 16 plus 1, which is the square root of 17. All right, that's kind of a funky number, but okay. So that's what I have so far for this one. I have the square root of 17. Let's see what AB comes up with. AB should be double that, whatever double that's going to be. So we do square root of, and we do square root of x2, which is 6, and then minus a minus 2, and that whole thing squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so we carry this over. So this becomes a 6 plus 2, which is 8 squared, plus 1 minus 3, which is minus 2 squared. Again, notice I have the same numbers here. There's my x, there's my y, all good. So 8 squared is 64, so we have the square root of 64 plus negative 2 squared is 4, so that becomes the square root of 68 is what I have there. So 60 is kind of a little bit of a funky number, and so I have to decide, can I turn 68 into anything else? Sure, I actually can. 68 is actually going to be, and this is one you, you may not know, a calculator could help you, 17 times 4 is how I get to 68. Because 4 is a square number, right, it's 2 and 2, then I take a 2 and I put it outside, I pick one of those 2's, put it outside, and I still have 17 left on the inside, so I have 2 root 17. So what we're showing here is that AB is 2 times square root of 17, and DE is square root of 17. So even though the numbers are a little bit funky there, what we can see is this one, AB, is definitely 2 times larger than that one. Okay, and that's the idea for what we're doing today. Um, let's take a look at number three real quick. And I'll wrap it up at number three. So number three does talk a little about angles. We'll take a look at what we have here. It says that B is the midpoint of AC. So this length matches this length. D is the midpoint of AE. So this length matches this length. ADB here is 70 degrees. The measurement of angle C right here is 60 degrees, and BD, this length, is 12, okay? So knowing that, we want to find CE and the measurement of angle E and a couple of the measurements here. Okay, so what we know is that if this is the, at the midpoint of both of these lines, then this value is half of the value of that line right there. So that means we're going to double this and do 12 times 2 to find out the value of that, which is 24. So that length right there, CE, is equal to 24. Remember we did that just a second ago up here to show that the longer length is double the middle length because it's the mid-segment. We're just cutting it in half to get the middle. That becomes 24. The measure angle E, because these become parallel lines, because we could figure out another way, but for now, that 70 matches this 70, okay? This is like the, um, like the interior angle, like from what we looked at last unit. So angle E would also be 70 degrees. The measure of ABD right here is going to match this one here. That's going to be 60 degrees right there. So we have a 70, 60, 70, 70, 60. To find the measure of angle A, well, we know we have a 60 used up and a 70 used up for 130. So what's left out of our 180 is going to be 50 degrees for the measurement of angle A. And that's it for today. So hopefully that makes sense and you get the feel, feel for that. Make sure you memorize these, these uh, formulas for our midpoint 
uh, formula. Also, the formula to show whether the slope formula here, y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1, and then also the formula for the distance formula. Those are three things you need to have memorized throughout this unit so you're ready for your test when it comes up later. Okay, have a great day.